Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Prepping for the Ryan White HIV AIDS Program Services Report, or RSR Submission, Key Steps for High Quality Data. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. My name is Debbie Eisenberg. I'm a member of the DIS team. We're one of several groups engaged by HAB to provide training and technical assistance to recipients and providers for the RSR. Today's webinar will be presented by my colleague, Ruchi, from the DIS team. Ruchi is going to review how to report required data elements based on services received, how to follow eligible service reporting requirements, and how to ensure data are complete and accurately reflect programmatic activities. Throughout the presentation, we'll reference some resources that we think are important and to help keep you on track and make sure you have access to them right away. My colleague Audrey is going to chat out a link. She just did it to a document uh, that includes the location of all the resources we're going to review in today's webinar. At any time during the presentation, you'll be able to send us questions using the Q&A function on your settings. It's at the bottom of your screen. And we'll address all of the questions in the Q&A at the end of the webinar. And you'll also be able to ask questions live at that time. And I'll tell you more about that at the end of the webinar. Now, before we start, I'm going to answer one of the most commonly asked questions about the slides. The recording of today's webinar will be available on Target HIV within one week of the webinar, and the slides and written question and answer are usually available within two weeks. Today's webinar is supported by the organization shown on the slide and its contents are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the official views of, nor an endorsement by, the Health Resources and Services Administration, the US Department of Health and Human Services, or the US government. So now, without further ado, I'd like to turn things over to Ruchi. Take it away, Ruchi. Thanks so much, Debbie. And thanks everyone for joining us today. As you know, RSR season is officially upon us, and this presentation is going to help you get ready for your submission. Whether you're new to the RSR or you're an experienced submitter, the topics that we'll discuss today are critical in submitting high quality data in your RSR. The first thing that we'll talk about today is the tools available to you to help you submit high quality data on the 2021 RSR. Then we'll review how to make sure your RSR client level data file includes the right clients. The next step is making sure that you're reporting all of the required data for those clients, including services, demographics, and clinical data. Finally, we'll talk about different ways to review your data before submission to make sure your RSR data are complete and reflect your expectations based on program activities. And finally, as always, we'll take your questions. Before we get started, I want to let you all know that there's a lot of content in today's webinar, and this might feel a little overwhelming if you're new to the RSR. Just try to stick with us, and if you have questions, like Debbie mentioned, feel free to chat them in using the Q&A function throughout the presentation. And we'll also do a poll at the end of the webinar today where you can let us know if you want us to reach out to you um, to provide you with any technical assistance based on what we've talked about today. So with that said, let's get started. We're going to start with all of the great tools and resources available to support you during your RSR process. Again, all of these links are also in the document that Audrey chatted out at the beginning of the webinar, so you can access them now if you need to. First, the RSR instruction manual for 2021 has been posted on Target HIV. This is the number one resource for all RSR related questions. Carefully reading through the manual is the best place to start on the RSR. Along with the instruction manual, the required client level data elements for Ryan White Services chart is a great tool to make sure that you know which data elements to include for clients depending on what services they received. The 2021 validations are also available on the Target HIV website. This document lists all of the errors, warnings, and alerts that you might encounter with your RSR data, so you can plan ahead to avoid having to correct data later on. Policy Clarification Notice, or PCN 1602, 
is where you need to look for the service category definitions to ensure that you're reporting the correct services for your clients. You can find this on the HAB website. The RSR timeline outlines key due dates for this year's submission. Of course, remember that recipients can always set earlier deadlines for their subrecipients if needed. The RSR TA brochure is a great resource that lists all of the TA providers, um, including the DISC team and data support, and includes what each of us does and how to contact us. And finally, if you're brand new to this and it's your first RSR, Target HIV has a whole collection of resources designed just for you. Remember that it's important to check to see if reporting requirements have changed at the beginning of each submission year. This year, there is one major change that we've been talking about for the past couple of years. Eligible services reporting was introduced as an option during the 2019 RSR, but it is now required for all recipients and providers. This means that all providers must include services provided to Ryan White eligible clients and funded via Ryan White related funding in their client level data file, regardless of payer. Ryan White related funding includes pharmaceutical rebates and program income. Another change that was introduced last year was the inclusion of the Ending the HIV Epidemic Funding and CARES Act funding data in the RSR. In your client level data, CARES Act and EHE funding should be treated as Ryan White funding. This means that Ryan White eligible clients who receive services funded by Ryan White's parts A through D, CARES Act funding, or EHE funding must be included. However, due to changes in reporting requirements, recipient reports for CARES Act funding are not required for the 2021 RSR, even though CARES Act funding is considered Ryan White funding. For more information, a great resource to review is our Understanding Reporting Changes webinar from fall 2021. So now that you've gotten all of your resources in order and know about the reporting changes for this year, we also recommend that you develop a plan, checklist, or workflow. You want to ensure that you've outlined all the steps needed to submit your RSR. Some really useful resources that DISC has developed to help you with this are our roles and responsibilities documents for recipients and providers. These documents will review all of the steps to consider when submitting your RSR. We've also recently released a new resource, a best practices tool for recipients to integrate RSR planning into a year long activity. So now I'm gonna walk through some of the key steps to RSR reporting. First, let's look at how to include the right clients. Your program may serve a lot of people. Maybe you're a large federally qualified health center, FQHC, or a health department, and you serve a lot of clients with different funding streams. How can you know who to include in your RSR? To be included in the RSR, the client must meet two criteria. First, the client must meet the recipient's Ryan White HIV AIDS program eligibility requirements. Eligibility requirements are decided between your recipient and HAB and are based on HIV status and other criteria such as income and residency. This year, please note that if you received um, ending the HIV epidemic initiative funding, EHE eligible clients should also be included in your client level data file. This is important to note because EHE does have different eligibility requirements than the Ryan White program. The second of the criteria is that the client must also have received a service that the provider funds with Ryan White or Ryan White related funding. To reiterate, for the purposes of RSR reporting, funding from CARES Act or EHE is considered Ryan White funding. Ryan White related funding means services funded with pharmaceutical rebates and program income. So let's walk through an example of how to include the right clients. So let's start with reviewing clients to determine if they meet eligibility requirements. In this example, there are three clients. For the recipient, the eligibility requirements are that the client is HIV positive, has a federal poverty level of up to 500%, and lives in the geographic or service area for which they're funded. 
As a reminder, recipients determine the eligibility requirements in conjunction with HAB, so your recipient's requirements may be different than what's presented here. So for these three clients, um, the three requirements were reviewed, and it was determined that clients X and Y do meet all three eligibility requirements, but client Z does not because they do not reside in the service area. Therefore, client um, C should not be included in the RSR, or client C, rather. The second step in determining which clients should be included in the RSR is ensuring that the client has received a service for which the provider received Ryan White or Ryan White or related funding during the reporting period. In this example, let's say the provider agency receives Ryan White funding for outpatient ambulatory health services or OAHS and food bank or home delivered meals. As we remember from the previous slide, two clients were determined to be eligible for Ryan White services. Now let's look at the services they receive to determine if the clients should be included in the RSR. Client A received only an OAHS service, which the provider was funded for with Ryan White funding. However, client B received only medical transportation assistance, which was not funded with Ryan White or Ryan White related funding. So client A should be included in the RSR and client B should not. Now let's review reporting the required data. There are three types of data required to be reported for the clients included in the RSR services, demographics, and clinical information. For services, you report only the service categories for the services your agency funded with Ryan White or Ryan White related funds. If a client is eligible, it doesn't matter who paid for the service, just that your agency uses Ryan White or related funding for that service. If you're not familiar with reporting requirements, your first step should be to review the RSR instruction manual. Traditionally, there are two types of services included in the RSR, core medical and support services. If you're not familiar with core and medical and support services, you should review PCN 1602. Beginning last year, ending the HIV epidemic or EHE initiative services are also included in the RSR. However, the EHE service category should only be used if the service does not fit into a previously defined service category in PCN 1602. For all services, except for AIDS pharmaceutical assistance and health insurance premium and cost sharing assistance, you will want to report the number of visits that the client received in the reporting period, which cannot be more than one per service category per day. For AIDS pharmaceutical assistance and health insurance premium and cost sharing assistance, you report yes if the client received the service at all. So let's walk through another example to see how well you understand what services to report. This provider receives Ryan White Part A funding to provide OHS and oral health services. They also receive EHE initiative funding to support transportation assistance. They also receive non-Ryan White funding for other services. Both client M and client N have been determined to be eligible to receive Ryan White or Ryan White related funded services. Client M receives OHS, emergency financial assistance and, trans and other professional services. While client N receives food bank or home delivered meals, oral health and other professional services. Oh, sorry, and, um, and transportation assistance. So based on this information, which services should be reported? For client M, OHS should be reported. Even though the client also receives emergency financial assistance and other professional services, the agency did not receive Ryan White or Ryan White related funding for those services, so they won't be reported. For client N, oral health and transportation assistance would be reported. Remember that CARES Act and EHE funding are both considered Ryan White funding for Ryan White or for RSR reporting. So let's see how well you understand how to determine which clients should be included in the RSR with our first quiz. So here the wellness agency receives Part D funding for medical case management, mental health services, and OHS. 
They also receive SAMHSA funding for mental health services and housing services. And they also use funds from pharmaceutical rebates for medical transportation and outreach. So now that we know how our sample agency funds their services, let's take a look at three sample clients to see which services should be included in the RSR. Assuming clients P, Q, and T all meet the agency's eligibility requirements, please select which of the following services should be reported for each client. Audrey, can you please launch our first quiz? Sure thing, Richie. So our first quiz is live. We're just trying out a new function. So there are a total of three questions, one each for client P, Q, and T. And like what you said, if you could um, give your best guess or your answers as to uh, what, fall, what services should be reported for each client. I already see some answers coming in. But knowing that this is a quiz, we'll give folks about maybe 30, 30 seconds, 45 seconds more. I see some folks are entering some of their answers in the Q&A function. Please use the poll function to submit your answers. And with that, I'm making some last calls for answers. Give it your best guess, given what you have learned or see on the slides. And truly the last call, ending the poll and sharing the results. And I will also now show the correct answers. Back to you, Richie. Thanks, Audrey. So let's review these answers um, in a bit more detail. So client P received mental health and outreach services. Um, which of these services should be reported in the RSR? So it looks like about 60% of you said that both mental health and outreach services should be reported, which is the correct answer. Um, since mental health services are funded with Part C funding, they would be included, and outreach services are funded with pharmaceutical rebates, which are considered Ryan White related funding for the RSR. Therefore, um, yes, the correct answer is that both of those services would be provided. For client Q, um, they received housing services. Um, so most of you here, 62%, said that no services should be reported for client um, for client Q, this is the correct answer. Um, and since no services are going to be uh, reported for this client, they're going to be actually excluded from the RSR entirely. And then lastly, uh, client T received OHS and housing. Um, so what the correct answer here is going to be is OHS. And I see that it says medical case management here instead of OHS. Um, so I apologize for that oversight in the poll. Um, OHS would be the correct answer, would be funded with Part C, um, and housing is only funded with SAMHSA, so it would not be reported. So uh, I see 41% of you did kind of get the correct answer there, but again, apologies that um, it says um, uh, medical case management rather than OHS. So moving on from our first quiz, um, we want to talk next about how, how to know which clients to include, um, how now that you know which clients to include and what services you're reporting, uh, you'll want to determine which other data you have to report for each of those clients. So in other words, you don't have to report the same information for every client. Um, a great resource to help you out is this chart on the screen, which I know is very small and probably hard to read, but um, we have it linked in your resource document and also here at the bottom of the screen. We often call this the meatball chart. Um, it's Appendix A in the RSR instruction manual and is also a separate document on Target HIV this year. 
Um, but this chart lists all of the Ryan White service categories across the top, and then all of the demographic and clinical variables down the side. So if there's a dot in the middle of the box, it means that that data element should be reported for a client receiving that service. So let's review this in a little more detail. So let's start with demographics. There are nine data elements required for all clients, regardless of what services the client receives. These are year of birth, race, ethnicity, race and ethnicity subgroups, gender and sex at birth, and whether the client was new in the reporting year, which was a new reporting variable last year for the 2020 RSR. Health coverage is required for all core medical services, as well as non-medical case management and EHE services. For these service categories, you must also include whether a client received a service in the previous year if they are not new in 2021. So this was another new data element last year. Housing status and housing status collection date should be reported for five service categories. OHS, medical case management, non-medical case management, housing, and EHE. And the remaining demographic variables should be reported for four services, OHS, medical and non-medical case management, and EHE. Now let's move on to clinical information. Clinical information is only required to be reported for clients that receive OHS services. All of the listed data elements should be reported for all clients, except for the last two, the date of the first positive HIV test and the date of the OHS visit after the first positive HIV test. These two data elements are only reported for clients who were newly diagnosed in the reporting period. If you're using an RSR ready system, your system will know which data elements to report depending on the services provided. So you should be all set as long as the required data are entered and the correct service categories are chosen. One other important note is that your recipient may ask you to collect more information for local use than what is collected for the RSR. So what we're reviewing today is only what is required to report in the RSR. Um, but of course, uh, if your recipient has further requirements, make sure that you're aware of those as well. So now we're going to move on to our second quiz for today, and I have an abbreviated version of our required data elements table by service type on the table in this slide. We're going to come back to the two clients from our last quiz who you determined we would be including included in the RSR. So these are client P and client T. For these clients, we're wondering which um, which clients will need to report certain data elements for. So specifically, we're curious about the ethnicity variable, um, clinical information, and federal poverty level. So um, Audrey, do you want to go ahead and launch the second quiz? Sure thing, Richie. So for this uh, second quiz, we again have three questions one by one and for clients P and T. I see in the um, sort of comment section that folks are, some folks are having difficulty accessing the quiz or it's not showing up. Um, as with all new things, we're discovering something new. Um, we're finding that you must have the um, latest version of Zoom to have the quiz function enabled. Uh, we apologize for that technical difficulty, um, but hang tight, jot down your answers because we will just go over the correct answers in a bit. Seeing some answers come in now, uh, we'll give folks about 30 to 45 more seconds. Making that last call for answers for these three quiz questions. As I slowly go to, oh, here comes a flood of answers. And truly the last call ending poll and sharing the results. The correct answers, back to you, Richie. Thanks, Audrey. So for our first question, um, we were wondering for which clients we want to report the ethnicity variable. Um, and the correct answer here is both 
client P and client T. It looks like 82% of you guys got that question correct. Um, so great job. Um, both of these clients are going to need this data element because ethnicity is one of the variables that should be reported for all clients, regardless of what service they receive. Our next question was on clinical information. Um, most of you, 66%, said that client T only should have the clinical information provided. This is also the correct answer. Um, as I mentioned, clinical information should only be reported for clients who receive OHS services. Um, so since client P only received mental health and outreach, they do not fit into this category. And our last question was on federal poverty level percent. And um, here it looks like 55% of you said that cl both client P and client T would have this data element uh, reported. The correct answer is actually client T only. Um, Federal poverty level should only be reported for clients with OHS, medical or non-medical case management, or EHE services. So since client P did not receive any of those services, they would not need to have their federal poverty level um, percent reported. So now let's move on to reviewing your data before submission. So there are a lot of tools available to help you review your data submission, both before upload and after you upload your data into the RSR web system. I'd like to take a moment to review some of these resources that are available. Um, first, many RSR ready systems have created reports to help you review your data quality. One great example for careware users is the RSR report viewer that mimics the upload completeness report in the web system. You can identify clients with specific data issues just by clicking on the results in the report and then making any needed corrections. For more information on this, check out the Quick Start Guide number six on pre-built reports. Besides Careware, other RSR Ready systems also have developed reports to review your data. You can contact the DISC team or check with your system vendor um, to learn more about what is available for your system. Then for those of you who use tracks, remember that checks is included in the download package. Checks is an Excel table that has the data validations built in. So once you populate your data, you can identify any data quality issues. And if you wanna see a demo of this process, check out our recent tracks webinar where we actually walked through how to use, um, how to use checks to identify data quality issues. Then once you upload your file into the RSR web system, um, you can also access two important data quality reports called the validation report and the upload completeness report. The validation report compares your data against the list of validation checks. The upload completeness report, or UCR, is an aggregate report of all the data elements for required clients. It includes a breakdown of each response option by RSR data element including any missing data. The UCR only includes required clients and is geared primarily towards providers as it can only show data from a single agency at a time. If you wanna learn more about the UCR, be sure to register to attend our upcoming webinar on reviewing your data at upload and tools within the RSR web system on February 9th. And you can also check out our in-focus document on the UCR, which reviews the report sections and important questions to consider in your review. This year, we've also created a new interactive training module designed to help you learn how to use the UCR, interpret what the report shows you, and resolve data issues if you find them. So now I'm gonna provide some quick examples of how to review your UCR to see if you included the right clients and the right services. I'll also show an example of how to review to make sure that your data reflect the services that you're providing. So first let's talk about how to use the report to address each of the data quality topics that we just discussed. First, we wanna make sure that you're including all the right clients. The very first table in the upload completeness report, this data, uh, the summary data table, tells you the number of clients submitted within different service category, category groupings. 
And these um, service category groupings may look familiar because they're the same groupings that we discussed earlier when we talked about which data elements are reported for clients that receive which services. So what does the first number tell you about your program? Maybe it looks too low or too high. For example, if you were expecting to see close to 500 eligible clients in your file, the fact that you only have 78 total clients submitted should stick out to you. But assuming that the total client um, count looks correct, next you wanna see if you have reported all the required data for those clients. So here's a table showing the number of visits for each service category. In this example, we're happy with the data in the first row. It may match our expectations about our program. More than half of our clients have OHS visits and they have about one to two visits per year. But we might notice service categories that are blank where there should be data. For example, if we're funded to provide substance abuse outpatient care, but we have no clients receiving that service in our upload completeness report, we know that something is off. After noticing this issue, we can go back and check our source data to determine why these data are not there. So now let's move on to the other required data, demographics and clinical information. Each table in the UCR has the number and percentage of clients with missing data in the bottom row. The goal for all data elements is less than 10% missing data. If your data quality resources are limited and you're not sure what to prioritize, focus on the following key data elements, viral load, prescribed ART, health coverage, poverty level percent, and housing status. So let's take a look at housing status as an example. You can look in the bottom row of your UCR tables to see how much missing data you have. Like I mentioned, we strive for less than 10% missing data. So if you're missing a lot of data, like 33% in this case, you'll want to correct that as best you can before the final submission. Sometimes your data can be complete, but this doesn't necessarily mean that they're accurate. Clinical data elements are a good place to look to see if your data reflect your program. On this slide, I'm using prescribed antiretrovirals and last viral load test results as examples. For prescribed ART, the data are technically complete because there's no missing data, but based on what was submitted, this shows that no clients are prescribed ART. In this case, you should review your data to check to see if this is right. You can also look at your viral load test results here to see if the two elements make sense together. Here, the report says that 50% of clients are virally suppressed. But how can half of the clients be virally suppressed if they aren't prescribed ART? It looks like the prescribed ART data don't reflect your program. In a case like this, you should go back and look at your source data to attempt to determine why the ART data are not being pulled correctly into your XML file. If you run into issues determining the source of your data quality issues, contact the DISC team and we can help you through it. Now, I also really wanna plug again, our new interactive RSR UCR training module, which basically walks you through the entire UCR in the same way that I just did with those couple tables. Um, if you do use the module and have any questions or feedback for us, please don't hesitate to reach out as well. So to wrap up, I want to recap what we talked about today since I know it was a lot of information. Essentially, data quality is crucial for showing Ryan White stakeholders the good work that you're doing. When assessing data quality, consider three aspects, including the right clients, including the right data for those clients, and ensuring that your data reflect your program activities. Also, be sure to review your data before you submit your RSR. Tools like the Upload Completeness Report can really help. Feel free to contact the DISC team if you want to review your UCR together or have any other questions about your data submission. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of today's webinar, we're going to launch a poll to see how comfortable you're feeling with the material that we just covered. So Audrey, can you launch our, our poll? Sure thing, Ruchi. Here's our, I promise, our one question poll. Would you like a DISC team member to reach out to you to help you plan for your RSR? A quick temperature check for folks as we're wrapping up.
quick and easy. We'll give folks about a couple more seconds to let us know. And if not, you can always use the question and answer function just to like chat us to say, I would like you to contact me and then we'll have your contact information and we can reach out. So I'll end the poll and share the results. Uh, thank you folks for letting us know. For the folks who uh, said yes, 28%, we will have, um, we will follow up following the webinar within about a week. Back to Thanks you, so Keith. much, Audrey. Um, so I know that this might feel like a lot to do, but there are several resources available to help you. The DISC team addresses questions for those needing significant assistance to meet data reporting requirements. DISC also deals with data quality issues, as well as providing TA on tracks and support in creating documentation. Data support addresses RSR-related content and submission questions. Topics include interpretation of the instruction manual and HABs reporting requirements, allowable responses to data elements, policy questions related to the data reporting requirements, and data-related validation questions. The EHB's Customer Support Center addresses software-related questions. Topics include electronic handbook or EHB navigation, registration, access and permissions, and performance report submission statuses. Then finally, the CareWare Help Desk is your best resource for any TA requests related to CareWare. We really encourage you to register for the listserv if you're a CareWare user to join the conversation with other CareWare users across the country. Most importantly, there is no wrong door for TA. If we can't assist you, we're happy to help refer you to somebody who can. So thank you all again for joining us today um, to learn more about preparing for this year's RSR submission. I'm now gonna pass things off to Debbie for the Q&A portion of our webinar.